Hey guys, today we're talking about brain fog. My name is Jonathan Parr, physical therapist at Parr PT. We have physician assistant Lindsay Mitchell from Vital Sides. Uh, I really like this topic because it tends to be a little bit more complex and a little confusing than it's like no one really knows what to do about brain fog. Like, what causes it? You know, how do I adapt to it? You know, is this something that's ever going to go away? And, you know, a lot of these questions could be answered both from a brain and body standpoint, depending on how you look at it. So um, I don't know, have you worked with patients with a lot of brain fog? Yeah, and I see brain fog, it's like one of the most common symptoms that I do see. And one way that makes it easier kind of for me to describe and to let people know what's going on in the body when you experience brain fog is when you have this brain fog, it's not just brain fog, right? There's other symptoms going on. Maybe you have a diagnosis um, or multiple diagnoses, right? And when you're experiencing other symptoms, maybe you're fighting off a virus, maybe you have a physical injury, maybe you have experienced a traumatic situation, there are other things going on in the brain and the body. So oftentimes you're living in this state of fight, flight, freeze, that chronic stress response. And when you are living in this stress response, hormones like cortisol and adrenaline are being released in the brain, communicating with the body that a threat is present. And you're not focused on a task at hand, right? You're not focused on, oh, okay, what's the most logical step to do next? It's more so you're focused on how the heck do I get away from this situation or how can I fight this situation? And oftentimes that's when that brain fog occurs and it makes it harder to concentrate because you're solely focused on survival. And oftentimes you don't need to be thinking about sitting down and reading a book or thinking about a situation when you are fighting off um, something that is considered a threat. So luckily there are things that we can do to kind of change our brain's association to the safety of our environment, the safety of our situation. Um, but is that kind of how you have experienced things in your practice, Jonathan? Yeah, especially when, you know, we teach a lot of movement-based stuff. So we try to figure out, you know, what, what's, what are the movement patterns that you need to move efficiently and without expending too much energy? And it's just like sometimes when there's too many components together, it's a lot to think about. So if you're already in that state of brain fog and you throw a bunch of new stimulus at you know someone, it makes it even worse because now you're getting more stress. Uh, it's causing other things in the body, whether it's with the GI. Um, then you get that, that same pattern of, okay, I'm basically going the snowball effect of the same thing over and over and over again. And it's learning how to break that. So, you know, rather than giving like what we do, we don't really give like a five part activity where I'm having to teach five different components. I'm like, look, let's just look at one. I'm like, let's get one piece of information mm -hmm. in your head. That way you feel more relaxed to try to learn and it's an easier transition. And not to mention, because you are doing some sort of movement, it's also helping with the other hormones that are involved in exercise that help reduce that tension and that anxiety that comes with learning new things. And learning doesn't have to be um, limited to just physical therapy and exercise. It could be school. It can be, um, you know, games that you do on your phone. I mean, it could be a lot of different things. It's just really interesting that knowing how to manage it, both from a mind and body, it's, it's it's really challenging, but once you get the right patterns, it's really not that challenging to, to treat. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. And I, I think it always, to me at least, comes back to this, okay, how can I create a sense of safety, whether it's a sense of safety in my body or my environment? And that's one way that we can sort of counteract this symptom of brain fog. Um, so my tip today for all y'all watching at home is, when you experience that brain fog, like all of a sudden you're doing a task and the brain, or, you know, kind of just turns off or maybe you're doing an activity and all of a sudden you start to experience that brain fog, maybe it's constant. But what I'd like you to do is identify that it's brain fog, call it out, you know, say it by name and count to five. So even just, you know, hold out your hand and count five, four, three, two, one. And on that one or zero, 
do something totally different. And so like Jonathan was saying, you know, create that sense of safety. So have that comfort, like don't go run five miles, but instead remove yourself from whatever environment you're in and maybe go outside, right? Look at nature or, you know, go to your bedroom and lie down. Maybe you have an association to safety in your bed and that's comforting to wrap a blanket around you, but change your environment entirely. Count to five and then change your environment. And this is actually really vital to the brain and to the body to know, okay, I'm in a totally different situation. I can experience different physiology in this moment. And all of a sudden I have a new association to safety, to comfort, to ease. Um, that's something that's super helpful for me that I've seen. Uh, so if you do have any more questions about this and kind of creating this sense of safety in your brain, feel free to message me, follow me at my vital side. If you have any questions for Jonathan about how to kind of change your association to brain fog in your body, um, please contact Jonathan at PT Austin. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye-bye.